Welcome to the Bahamas, one of our favorite cruising destinations. And that's a question we get asked a lot. What are your favorite places to travel? So we thought we'd do a series. This is part three of one we've done on the French waterways and the French canals. I think after the Bahamas, probably one of our top destinations. It was a fabulous summer, 10 weeks sailing from the north of France all the way to the Mediterranean. Since mid-May, Paul and I have been traveling through the inland waterways of France aboard our southerly 49 sailboat, Distant Shores 2. Although she's an ocean-going sailboat, the boat's variable draft swing keel means we can reduce the boat's draft to handle the shallow 1.8 meter or 6 foot controlling depths of some of the small canals on this voyage. The voyage began with a crossing of the English Channel to Le Havre, where we took down the mast and motored up the River Seine to Paris, then continued south through the four small canals, making up what's known as the Bourbonnais route. This will lead us to the rivers Saône and Rhône, and eventually to the Mediterranean Sea. We're about halfway along the Bourbonnais route at Briare, where we've just completed the Canal de Briare, and are now starting on the Canal Latéral à la Loire. We're crossing over the shallow and sometimes dangerously flooding River Loire using the beautiful Briare Aqueduct. The Canal Latéral à la Loire parallels the Loire River. We'll travel this canal for 196 kilometers and transit 36 locks before we reach the Canal de Centre, the final section of the Bourbonnais route. The Canal de Centre is only 112 kilometers long, but has 61 locks. So from here, we have 97 locks to go before connecting with the Saône River. The canals and waterways of France are managed by the VNF, the French Waterways Authority, and take you through the heartland of the country. With nearly 8,000 kilometers or 5,000 miles of canals, some hundreds of years old, it's a massive undertaking to finance and maintain them. So some stretches are purely functional and unmanicured while others, actually most, are quite attractive and lovingly maintained. You can buy a seasonal or annual permit online through the VNF website and print it out to display on the boat. Since we'll be in the canals for 10 weeks during spring and summer, the best value was to purchase an annual permit, which cost about 470 euros, or around 600 American dollars, and includes lots of free halt nautiques, basic places to tie up your boat. And I guess we weren't actually sailing. It's a motoring trip for sure. No, we had taken the mast down so that we could uh, motor through. And we were going to have the mast chipped as you can do in the sensible option. But our mast ended up being too big, so we carried it on deck, which is another workable way to do it. And we went over that a little bit in uh, part one. But this time we're going to talk about finishing that trip as mm -hmm. we came through the rest of the little canals and then down into the big rivers, the Rhone and the Saone River. And then you come right out to the Mediterranean. And, and somehow that was... You know, quite a big thrill after 10 weeks in the canals to little pop out tiny into... tiny locks and little waterways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To suddenly be in a big ship river. And uh, the, the geography changed, you know, big cliffs and beautiful vineyards on the hillsides. Yes, about vineyards. So that's <laughs> a good point. So yeah. the wine country was a highlight of, mm -hmm. uh, of the trip and we'd been looking forward to that. Because with the boat, you're going through these canals and you're right in the middle of, uh, well, different wine countries, depending mm -hmm. on which canal route you take. Yes. But uh, we went through the Burgundy area and the Loire mm -hmm. Valley, and, and there were a number of wineries that we could get to with the bicycle. Apparently, this lock often has a lineup, and as we approach, we see the chamber already has boats in it. These are quite deep locks, since it's what's called a flight. Two locks joined together, making the walls very deep. The lockmaster helps catch the lines with a hook. Half a meter, Paul. He's saying we're at a better angle. So you just keep us snug there, Cher. Yeah, I'm keeping the line tight. With three boats, it's a bit crowded, and the front boat comes right up to the wall. This is the tallest lock we've been in so far. It's also a double lock. So we got three boats in here, and there's only a little tiny bit between each one, so we're really worried about whether we'll even fit. This is very cool, because out of the top of this double lock, we go straight onto an aqueduct 
So I think we're crossing the Loire again. It's actually a tributary to the Loire River, and this aqueduct at La Guatin was constructed 190 years ago, nearly 70 years before the longer one at Briar. In 1820, its all-stone construction was a masterpiece, and at 470 meters long, a huge civil engineering project. Oh, finished. Finished. Merci, monsieur. Merci pour le tout. Voilà. Bon voyage. Merci. Au revoir. The double lock has lifted us way up above ground level so we can cross the Aliar River, a tributary to the Loire, and again is a surreal experience being up so high in our boat. Bit of an emergency. The bow thruster just quit all of a sudden. So obviously fuse, and I'm just taking a look at it. Okay. So this is a huge fuse, a 400 amp, and in these tight conditions we, we really need it. So it's obviously blown and broken. And I do not have a spare fuse. I don't know why it's been on my list for a while, but I haven't got one. So. I went over and I talked to a couple of the other boaters here. So I have got a couple of fuses, a 300. Nobody had a 400 fuse. So I got a 300 and then it looks like you can take it apart. So I've got the 300 and a 125. And we can put them together to make a bigger fuse because essentially all you're trying to do is have this part that's the fuse part, the narrow part, be greater capacity. So the two will work together, each carrying some of the current. This is the theory anyway. We'll see if this works at least long enough for me to get the part. And uh, the middle of France, we just haven't found. It's beautiful, there's farms, there's wine, there's baguettes, <laughs> but not necessarily uh, parts for ocean going sailboats or even the canal boats or anything so you know when it comes right down to it how many spare parts can you have a bit exciting to be without the bow thruster so i hope this does it super super friendly fellow cruisers help out we can do a, a test okay the lights are on yay hey thank you <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Traveling the French canals on this route, you have a number of opportunities to visit winemakers, and we bicycled off to see what we could find in the Santenay region. You can feel the difference in the temperature coming down here. So it's very yes, good it's, for the wine. It's 12, 13 in the Great Centigrade. How old is this building? 15, uh, this part, 15th century, up uh, 19th century. 15th and the house. century? Yes, 15 this one, and uh, the up cellar and uh, the house, 19. Incredible. So this yes. part was when Columbus sailed across the ocean, this is... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our charming hostess explains that Prosper Mofu is a wine maker, not a wine grower. They concentrate on creating the best wines from various Burgundian appellations. They produce a range of wines to meet all tastes and budgets, from regional appellation wines to the top category, Grand Cru. Oh, make wine, it's like the haute couture. Right. Did you like it? You'd like to come down here? Magnificent place. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is your job. Yes, it's a magnificent job, <laughs> but it's, I am living here and uh, I am a lucky woman, oh. <laughs> I think. <laughs> we conclude our visit with a tasting, and I make the mistake of saying I don't like wines that are too tannic. Well, it's, we are in Burgundy, yeah, in, uh, in Burgundy, uh, 
the Pino Noir, it's a nice ah, uh, uh, wine tannin. Can it exist one, but that it's an appellation regional. But uh, it's a regional appellation. Yes. Merci bien. It's a Thank you nice very pleasure. much. We order a case of our favorite wine and head back to the boat, where shortly afterwards it's delivered to us right at the canal. Merci. Merci. Now that's the Merci way to buy wine. I think this is my dream canal. Bicycle path beside the waterway, view out over the vine-clad hills, wineries and little restaurants. It was worth all this fuss to get out into France on boat. Once we got into the large rivers of Rhone and Saone, the locks changed because they had to accommodate big ships as well. And that made it a little bit challenging for small recreational boats like ours. Uh, but in fact, it turned out to be not so hard because they were set up with floating bollards. Alrighty, the biggest lock that we have done so far, 23 meters down, so we're like 70 feet up above the surrounding countryside. This is amazing. We just do it by making one line tight here and cleating it off as short as we can. In fact, I think I'll grab it on the bottom. It's a better angle. It's so cool because this huge bollard thing just floats up and down and we get pinned in with just the one. We're good. We are parked, nice and snug. This thing will hopefully just float down the whole 70 feet with us. It's like a seven story apartment building. Unbelievable, all this water. Woohoo! We're getting so much closer down to sea level, a few more locks to the Mediterranean. Yep, we're going down. We have done 175 locks so far in our voyage across France. Now we've just four locks left to reach the Med. This one at Bolin is the deepest in Europe with a rise of 23 meters, the height of a seven-story building. There are floating bollards to tie to, and I suppose this is the only way to deal with a 70-foot drop. The bollards are set back in the wall, and as we sink down in the lock, the bollard sinks with us. The biggest lock in the whole system, 23 meters, goes down like a train. And the amount of water in here, just incredible. This is the biggest drop in the system, so the hydro plant here produces by far more power than any of the others on the system. And it's an amazing experience. Holy heck, everything is on such a huge scale. For such a huge chamber, the lock still drains in just seven minutes then the guillotine lock door lifts to let us all out. <laughs> oh my God! Look at the size of this thing. Everything is enormous. The gates are the biggest we've seen, the drop the highest we've seen. It's a huge, huge engineering marvel, these crazy French engineers, it's beautiful. Most of them had the floating mm -hmm. bollards, I think. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're a much more modern system. It's a different, a whole different experience. And because they're so big, they tend to wait for boats to come. So right. you could find it was a longer wait, but then it was a lot further between the lock and the next lock. So right. motoring down a big spacious river, it felt uh, like there was lots of room now to, <laughs> yeah, to, to go along and some beautiful scenes. And we got to see a couple of great cities. We went right through Lyon. Uh, right in the center of it and we tied up in a little marina there mm -hmm. and then a little further down we went into Avignon and that was uh, magical and uh, there was a theater festival on at the time so yeah. uh, let's run that piece now. Once through the lock it feels like a whole different place on the river.
this is fantastic. It feels like we've flipped a switch. It's just been about two days down the river here, and suddenly it feels like we're in the Mediterranean. There's hot, hot weather. The, the geography has changed. The, so the buildings look like Mediterranean, and woohoo! Finally! Our next major stop on the river is the enormously historical city of Avignon, most famous as the new home of the Pope, or Chateau Neuf du Pape in French. It's also home of the famous Bridge of Avignon, which we must pass by to get to our mooring on the wall. I'm disappointed to see the bridge in such bad repair until I learn it fell down more than 300 years ago. Spring floods kept washing away the stone spans, so they gave up repairing it. In 1309, Pope Clement moved the papacy from Rome to Avignon, and the amazing fortified palace of the Pope dates from this period. The papacy stayed in Avignon until 1377, when Pope Gregory moved it back to Rome. For three weeks, starting the middle of July and into the first week of August, is the Festival of Avignon, and it's theater everywhere even 11.30 and midnight. Are you sure? No. We have a show today. Uh, tomorrow at uh, 10 uh, past 10, uh, 10, uh, 10, quoi. 10, 10. In the morning. In the morning. Mais qu'est-ce que tu fous là, toi? Mais, mais, mais vite, c'est moi. Ah, ça, c'est mon mari. Il est, il est bloqué à l'intérieur et, et, et il est fou. Il faut qu'on sorte d'ici. So as we came down the big rivers, we came out to Port St. Louis. Uh, we went into the Navy Yard there and uh, got ready to put the mast back up again. Uh, very exciting, for sure. We were yeah. really thrilled to get back out into the proper... To be a sailboat be a <laughs> once again. <laughs> yeah. And it was quite funny because some of the other boats that we had traveled with didn't recognize us because all of a sudden we had a mast and we're a sailboat. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> so. were, we were 65 feet long because our 49-foot boat, having the mast on top, yeah. we were almost 65 feet long altogether. So then when you stood the mast up, we looked totally different. We took off our fender boards and went back to our normal configuration for the ocean yeah. and um, put our bicycles away uh, <laughs> and had really enjoyed the trip. Man, that has just been the most amazing trip. I think getting to see France right in the middle of the country, the little towns, the little villages, the rivers, a lot of locks and canals, my goodness. It's an exciting, exciting way to get to see France. We have been almost 10 weeks in the French canals with a mast lying on deck. Now comes the job of putting it back up for sailing. We lift it off the deck and lay it down on horses to work on it, reassembling all the rigging and other bits, like the radar that we took down in La Havre. When it's all reassembled, it's time to stand it up, all 300 kilograms of it. Oh. So much weight swinging overhead. You don't need to worry about wearing a hard hat because if it lands on you, a hard hat's not going to help anyway. Just heavy weight. So if anyone's thinking of doing the trip, throw down below any questions in the comments section mm -hmm. if you have any questions, We'd if you're happy planning to it. Answer. We really recommend doing this trip if you have the opportunity. It was a great way to see France. Yeah, and to be clear, we really recommend going through the French canals, not necessarily doing it in your own boat, because mm -hmm. there's a lot yeah. of challenges to that, but uh, somehow, you know, get through those canals somehow, either on a rental barge or... Yeah, or, the uh, charter boats are great. Yeah. Everyone had a lot of fun with those. Yeah. yeah, and then other people were just buying a boat and doing the system that way for a year or two, and then mm -hmm. selling, a, selling a boat again. Yeah. So that, yeah. that seemed to work. Mm -hmm. Met a lot of people doing that. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and see you next next time on Distant Shores. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we post the next one so we can take you along as we sail to another great cruising destination.